In this video tutorial, I will teach you how I make the triple corkscrew copper wire bracelet. I start out by annealing 16 gauge copper wire with a butane torch. And then it gets quenched in a Sparex pickle, which is heated in a crock pot. Then it will get rinsed and dried and then I will wind it up on a wire coiler with a six millimeter mandrel. I'm going to make three coils, approximately three and a half inches long. Once they are coiled, they are annealed once again. I've developed a jig for wire management for making the copper wire bracelet. Uh, we do have a previous video on a copper wire bracelet, corkscrew bracelet, using two sections of coils. And this is using three. As the projects get more difficult, wire management becomes more important. This jig um, also does have attachments that uh, can be used for doing other types of wire work. It also comes with 80 stainless steel pins. So I am taking the first coil and spreading it in between each one of the pins. And I'm going to use 14 gauge copper wire. This does not have to be annealed. And that is going to be inserted inside of the coil. We'll be cutting several lengths of this. I need to get that straight, so I'm uh, flattening and pounding that down on a steel bench block. And then to further straighten it, I will roll it underneath the steel bench block. And that gets it nice and straight. So it serves to hold the, uh, the coil in place and it also becomes the framework for the bracelet. So I have three coils here. Two are wound clock clockwise. One has been wound counterclockwise. So we're starting with the clockwise coil, one of the clockwise coils. Now I am interspersing the counterclockwise coil in between each of the wires of the first coil and inserting a 14 gauge wire to hold those two coils together. Annealing the coils before you start placing them on the jig will help tremendously because it will reduce the amount of spring. Now I'm taking the second clockwise coil and interspersing it between the second one that was wound counterclockwise. So it basically gives like a herringbone pattern. One set of loops leans to the left, the other leans to the right. So if you go back and forth and make them opposites, you get a really nice pleasing pattern. Jig really takes the, a lot of difficulty out of holding all of this together in your hands at the same time and trying to manipulate the wires and insert wires and it uh, really does make uh, making this type of bracelet a lot easier. So I'm taking a fourth piece of 14 gauge copper wire, double the length of the previous three that I cut and folding that in half it is going to go into the lower loops 
on the bottom of your screen and it is going to replace one of the uh, the sections at the top. So once you've got that all put together, you're just going to lift it off of the pins. And remove it from the jig. Now we're going to even up the pieces so they are all the same length. In this case, I am making a bracelet that uh, the coil section is seven inches long and by the time you add on the loops and the hook you've got a bracelet for a large extra large size wrist now this section here where i am moving the loops is not a uh, an absolute necessity. I just prefer to have everything really nice and tight in the bracelet. So what I'm using is just the point of a burnishing tool and pushing all of the loops up. And I'm going to do that on both the left and the right sides. You won't be doing anything to the center coil section. because everything was annealed, it's very easy to move the loops. So just um, going through, sliding them all in the same direction with even spacing between them. That's another great thing about the jig is it allows you to get the spaces between each of your loops just right. So you're going to do that on both sides if you choose to do it this way. You could take the outer loops and you could give them a little bit of a twist. You can leave them straight across. Uh, really it's uh, your design and it's totally up to you. I've made quite a few of these bracelets and each one always looks a little bit different because I use a little bit different um, design in each one of them. This makes a nice substantial bracelet. So I have a swage block here, steel swage block, and using a uh, plastic rubber mallet there I am tapping the bracelet into one of the channels and it is creating a domed effect and it's also tightening everything up. And I'm just going to go back and check the spacing, make sure everything's even. And I did light tap to start with. Now I am, uh, after I've made sure everything is going in the right direction, I'm tapping it uh, harder at this point and continuing to press all of the wires together so everything is really nice and compact. If you find that you're not getting everything really compact, you may want to anneal that again. And again, moving the wires. You really want to make sure your wires are facing one direction or another. If you're going to do the doming, in the swage block and the reason for that is if you don't have them all going in the same direction and you do the forming in the swage block you're going to find that your outer loops are going to not have the uh, uniformity some will tip up some will tip down some will twist so if you're going to dome your bracelet, you do want to have your outer loops going in uh, the same direction. doesn't mean that the outer loops on one side have to match the outer loops on the other side. You just want to make sure all the loops on one side go in one direction. So now I'm tapping down on the side and uh, compressing the bracelet even tighter at this point. So just tapping and moving the loops and tapping again and just playing with it till I get it really nice and tight. So I've got a real nice dome on there now. 
the bracelet has gotten much smaller in the width and I'm continuing to tap the sides down and the goal is to fit it into that smaller channel there. And at this point, it is fitting into that channel. So I'm just gonna move away, all the way down. And looks really good, really nice and tight. So let's work on the wires now. These are your 14 gauge wires. The two center ones, uh, they are left in there because they are needed for support, but we don't want to see them. So I've taken the tips of them and turned them down a little bit, and then I'm pushing them down inside of the coiled wires to hide them. Now, if you don't do any soldering, uh, you don't have to do any soldering. Um, but if you do not do any soldering, you just want to make sure all of your wires are wound and wrapped tight so they don't come apart when the bracelet is being worn. So I've taken those two center wires, turned the tops down on them, and pressed them down inside of the coils to hide them. And just making sure that the coils are all nice and neat and uniform. The coil ends, each one of those three coil ends needs to be tucked down inside of the coils itself. Now I am taking the outermost wire and shaping it and pulling it down to become one end, the loop on one end of the bracelet. And I am soldering and annealing at the same time. So. I'm annealing the bracelet, but I'm also going to solder the wires on the end. I want the two inner wires soldered, and I want each of the three coiled ends, I want those wires soldered as well. That way I'm assured that those are not going to come loose when the bracelet is being worn. And again, pressing everything really nice and compact because it's been annealed and it's now soft again. So we're going to work on the opposite end, the inner two wires. I'm going to peel back some of the coils and cut the two 14 gauge inner wires down as short as I can get them. Then rewrap some of the wire on the top and that hides those two inner wire ends and then I'm going to do the same thing on this end I am soldering in the two 14 gauge wires as well as the ends of each of the three coiled sections pickled cleaned up and the two uh, single outer wires on this end. I've measured out at one inch each and I'm going to turn them with a bale making plier. This is a seven millimeter and nine millimeter bale making plier. I'm using the nine millimeter side to make loops and those each one of those free ends is going to tuck down into the coil on the opposite side and squeeze them together because we're going to solder them in place and we're also going to solder them together. So what I'm using here is copper wire solder and using a, a pair of pliers and pinching those two together so the solder flows between them because I want those to be soldered together. And then it's going to get uh, pickled and cleaned up and ready for the next step. 
I've taken one of the pieces of scrap wire and folding it in half. Oh, the piece is probably five, five and a half inches long. Folding it in half, flattening it down, down tight, and now I'm measuring to cut at one and three quarters inches long. This is going to become the S hook for the bracelet. And I'm going to solder those two wires together. So I've pinched them together, stick soldering in some copper wire solder, pinching it closed so the solder flows all the way between the two pieces. And that gets quenched and pickled. And I'm going to clean everything up here uh, between the file and different uh, sandpaper grits and sanding block. Uh, file and get everything nice and clean and smooth and ready for polishing. And just going across everything with a sanding block. Okay, the wire that is going to become our S hook, we need to file and sand that uh, cut end and make that nice and smooth and round. Also uh, using the sanding block and get that all cleaned up there. This is a 3.5 and 5 millimeter bail making plier. I'm using the small end, the 3.5, to make the small part of the S hook. And then the 5 millimeter side is making the larger end of the S hook. And that is going to go into one of the loops. It really doesn't matter which of the loops that you choose. That's uh, totally up to you. And then pinching that closed so it stays in place. And I have an oval bracelet mandrel here, wood mandrel. And the bracelet is actually very easy to shape. Um, it has been annealed, so it's still quite soft at this point. And just uh, trying the clasp out, making sure everything works. And now I am putting it back on the mandrel. And I'm tapping some of that dome down just a little bit. Not too much, because I don't want to flatten it right back out again. But I'm also work hardening at this point. And that will make the bracelet much more rigid. And what you have is an absolutely gorgeous, stunning bracelet. You could add patina at this point, and you could leave it bright and shiny. Uh, whatever you choose to do, because copper oxidizes, if you want it to stay looking the way it is when it's finished, uh, seal with Protect-A-Clear. Uh, we have a previous video that shows Protect-A-Clear. In the case of this bracelet, I decided to do silver plating on it. And you can also see silver plating shown in a previous video. If you have any questions, please post them. I'd be happy to answer.